In this video, I'll show you examples of how I resize my AIR to different aspect ratios using Figma. I'll also show you how I clean up my mid-journey images using Photo P, a free version of Photoshop. As someone who sells AI art as printable wall art, I offer my customers various sizes so they can bring in whatever size they want. I use mid-journey and AI art generator wow. to create my art. The images are generated in an aspect ratio of 1 by 1 unless specified otherwise. Once the image image is generated, you cannot just ask the AI to recreate the exact same image in different sizes. That's why you'll need to manually resize the image into different aspect ratios. So here are some of the things that I'm going to go through. If that's interesting hmm. to you, watch till the end and you may learn a trick or two. Before I begin the resize process, I would upscale the image to increase the resolution first. This is important for printing as it helps to maintain the quality and sharpness of the image, especially when printing in larger sizes. Okay, now let's head over to Figma. By the way, it's free and you can either download it on your PC or use the web version. I personally have the PC version because I use it very frequently. Let's first create a frame. A frame is like a template for your image. So to create one, just press F on your keyboard and drag across the area. Now, for the sizing, here are the 5 common aspect ratios for wall art. So you'll want to resize your AI art to the largest size within the aspect ratio category. Doing this ensures that the image will maintain its quality when printed in different sizes within the aspect ratio category. I prefer not to resize the image beyond 24 inches because I'm concerned that the print quality might suffer based on the resolution size of my image. Here, I've created the 5 frames in the respective sizes and they act as my black template. So whenever I start on a new project, I'll just copy and paste them to the new project. A quick tip, the name of the frame will be the file name when you export later. You'll notice that Figma uses pixel as their measurements. So to quickly convert from inches to pixels, you can use a plugin for that. Click on the Figma logo, hover over plugins and click find more plugins. Search for unit converter and click run. This box will pop up and you will then input the number accordingly. I will create the frames in 72 dpi and later export them in 300 dpi. I don't want to mess up my template so let me quickly duplicate it first. I'll highlight all the frames and hold onto the alt key and drag them to a new blank area. Next, take your image and drag it into the frame. You should see the image going into the frame and to check if it's in it, click on the frame and you should see on the left panel here that the image is in the frame container. Here, double click on the image to select it and resize it to fit the frame. There will be red lines to indicate when it's aligned with the border. And like that, you're done with the first frame. So moving to the next frame, you just duplicate the image by selecting it and press Ctrl D. you see two of the same image in the frame container. So just select one of them and drag it into your next frame. After that, just resize it accordingly and then repeat it for the remaining frames. Notice how some parts of the image are being cut off. Let's fix this. Going back to the first frame, double click on it to select the image. Double click again and the pop-up will appear. Change the fill type to fit and now you'll see that the full image will fit in the frame. Now you'll see white spaces at the sides and here's how to fill them. Create two duplicates of the image by selecting it and pressing Ctrl D twice. You should see three of the images in the frame container. Select one of it, right click on the image and click flip horizontal. Now you'll just move the image to fill the gap and make sure to adjust it accordingly so that it fits perfectly. In some cases, when you move the image too fast, it will appear out of the frame. If that happens, simply drag the image back into the frame container on the left panel. You can also zoom in if you want a clearer view. Now repeat the same process for the remaining frames. And there you have it. Now the image stays consistent throughout the sizes. Moving on to the next example. Notice how this image has a white edge and some unnecessary elements on the border. So in this case, I'll crop up the unnecessary part. But first, make sure that the image is fitted in the frame. Change the fill type to crop and then crop up the unwanted part. I prefer this image with a border. So to add that, select the frame and click on the plus sign for stroke. Ensure that inside is selected and I'll go with a width of 25 and I'll pick a color that matches the image. After that, I'll just resize the image to fill in the white gap. And that's it for this example. It's pretty straightforward.
Now for the last example. This image has some wordings and inconsistent background color. So I'll need some editing to fix this and I'm going to use Photo P for that. It's basically a free version of Photoshop. I have to admit that I'm not good at Photoshop but I know enough of the basics just to fix this issue. Okay, now go to photop.com and import the image. Use the magic wand and select the background. To add on the selection, press on shift key while selecting the area. To remove from the selection, press on alt key while selecting the area. Once you have selected all the areas, click on the brush tool and hold onto the Alt key and click on the background. This is to select the background color as the color of the brush tool or you can just change the color to whatever you want. Increase the brush size and paint all over the areas. Once you are done with the painting, deselect the area by pressing Ctrl D. Then just paint over the words to remove it. You want to make sure that all of the background is painted. If not, there will be patches of different color. Export the image and bring it into Figma. After that, it's pretty much the same as before. Drag the image into the frame. Change the fill type to fit. But this time to fill the white spaces, select the frame and change the color. Click on the pen logo and select the background of the image. Adjust the image accordingly and now you should see that the image should blend nicely with the background. Okay, that's the resizing part done. Now, it's important to export the images at 300 dpi for printing purposes. This ensures that the images are of high quality and have crips details when printed. To export them at 300 dpi, select the frame and click on export option in the right panel. Change the value from 1x to 4.17x and export it as a JPEG format. You may be wondering why I've chosen 4.17x. It's because the frames were created in 72 dpi. If you take 300 and divide it by 72, you'll get 4.1666. So Rounding up to that, it will be 4.17. I'm not claiming to be an expert in this topic, but JPEG seems to be the most common file format for printing from what I've observed on Etsy. That's why I'm choosing JPEG as the file format. So that's it for the tutorial. Thanks for watching. And if you learned something new, please consider liking the video or subscribe. Let me know in the comments if you have any feedbacks or any suggestions. See you in the next one. Goodbye.